whenever we use a tool like BWCTL, what we're attempting to measure is a certain metric across our network, and we usually call this throughput. But this is a pretty vague term, and it's intermixed with a couple of other related items. So let's try to define all these different terms so that we understand what we're truly measuring when we use this tool. The first term that we're going to use is called capacity. And when somebody uses the word capacity, what this means is this is the, the speed of a link. And we can think about this in terms of the entire end-to-end -end path, but we have to think about it in terms of the capacity of each individual link first. So we have an example on this picture, and this has different links uh, connecting a source and a sink. Each of these different links has a different capacity. At the far end, we have a 45 megabit per second link, we have a 10, we have a 100, and we have another 45 megabit per second link. So each of these has a different capacity. But if we think about this in terms of the, the full end-to-end -end path, we have to define what the narrowest link is. In this case, it's the 10 megabit per second path. This means that for this entire uh, length of network, the fastest that we can expect to get, if there was no other uh, traffic occurring at the exact same time, would be 10 megabits per second. This is our bottleneck. So the capacity of our end-to-end -end path is really the capacity of our narrowest link. The second term that we need to define is the utilized bandwidth. And what we mean by this, this is the current traffic load. And much like in the capacity case, we need to define this in terms of every single link along the path as well as what the entire end-to-end -end path is going to look like. So each of the links that we see there has a different utilization, and this is represented by the shaded pink area of each of the pictures. If we look at the first link, it's a little bit less than half full. The, the 10 megabit per second link is about half full. The 100 is not quite half. And then we have our last link there, which we've defer, defined to be the tightest of the links. This is the one that happens to be the most utilized right now. If we were going to perform a, a, a capacity or a, a bandwidth measurement end-to-end, uh, -end, we would be restricted by that tight link. This is what BWCTL is really meant to measure. It's meant to measure the achievable bandwidth. And what achievable bandwidth means, it's the highest amount of bandwidth that you can achieve at the point that you run the test. This includes things like protocol and host issues. It also includes things like tunings. So if we were to run BWCTL on an end-to-end -end basis for the, our example right now, we would first be restricted by the narrowest link, which is 10, but we're further restricted by the tightest link, which is that 45 megabit per second link that's more than 90% full. If we were to run the tool, we would get back an answer that would give us that number right there. If for some reason these links became less utilized or there was an upgrade performed, we would see different numbers. We should also note that this is all memory to memory when we're doing these tests. We're, we're simply using the main memory of the source and the sync to perform this, and we're not doing the test using a disk because that can also add additional delay into the path. So using these terms, we can use a tool like BWCTL to evaluate the bandwidth of a network.